Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, October 16th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A couple days ago, a researcher, Ravindo Bikramasinghe, did notice a vulnerable demo script left behind if you are installing the Angular Base64 upload extension. This is not Angular itself. It's additional software that's not part of the additional project. So not 100% sure how often it's actually used, but as so often it does install a couple of demo scripts to demonstrate its capabilities. One of them sadly does allow arbitrary file uploads without authentication. What makes it sort of a little bit more interesting is that I also noticed, and the reason sort of I came across this vulnerability, that we all of a sudden started having requests for these scripts and our honeypots. So that's time-wise very much correlated with the release of this vulnerability. There is no patch per se available because apparently the project is no longer maintained. However, the only thing you have to do is delete the demo folder. And just as a normal sort of uh, advice, if you do install any kind of project and there is sort of a demo or example folder or something like this, it's almost always a great idea to remove those folders before you install anything like this in production. And I went back a little bit and looked at uh, just the term demo, how often it shows up in requests within our honeypots. And interestingly, sort of uh, this year, around June, July, all of a sudden, there was a significant increase for requests like this. So this is not related to Angular Base64 upload, but uh, prior scans for demo-related URLs. So the attackers definitely have caught on to the fact that people are leaving folders like this behind with vulnerable scripts. And on Monday, I saw a number of uh, news articles uh, describing a Chinese paper as a breakthrough in quantum computing breaking the RSA algorithm. Well, uh, didn't comment on yesterday because I didn't have a chance to read the paper. I did some reading of it today. The problem with the paper is it's uh, written at least in good parts in Chinese and uh, has to sort of been read basically with Google Translator here. But uh, overall, I don't really see this as the end of uh, RSA cryptography as some of the news articles made it out to be. What they did is they used a commercial quantum computer created by D-Wave. D-Wave is a company that creates these computers for a while now in various iterations. And indeed, they were able to break RSA and they were able to do so much better than any existing sort of classical computer. However, what they broke was RSA 22, not RSA 1024 or 2048 bits, no, 22-bit RSA. So really what they did is they demonstrated the feasibility of uh, the algorithm and they used the annealing here in this case in order uh, to break asymmetric cryptography using quantum computers. They did not really demonstrate that D-Wave computers as they exist right now are practical to break currently used f versions of RSA. And that would be pretty much at least uh, 2048 bits. They're still sort of two orders of magnitude away from that. So what this really means is, first of all, relax. RSA is still good if used correctly. Now, if you do write new software right now that uses encryption, you have to preserve what I have recently been seen referred to as a cryptographic agility, where basically when you are using a particular cryptographic algorithm, see how you can make this basically variable. So it will be easy later to swap this algorithm for a better algorithm as they become necessary and widely available. 
Attackers bypassing endpoint detection is nothing really new, but it often has been a rather labor-intense and manual process. There have also been a couple commercial products that assisted with that, but now there is an interesting new open source project that red teamers definitely should be aware of. It's called EDR Silencer. EDR Silencer can be used to target a wide range of EDR implementations, Popular ones like uh, Microsoft Defender, Elastic EDR, uh, I see Tanium here in the list, but also a couple that uh, I honestly haven't uh, heard of uh, before being used widely. So uh, again, if you are a red teamer, take a look at it. If you are a blue teamer, ask your red teamers uh, to use these tools so you can check if you're able uh, to detect them somehow. Remember, the reason they bypass EDR is because current default EDR configurations do not detect any artifacts left behind by these tools. Uh, once you know what to look for, it always becomes a lot easier to create your detection rules. And just uh, one uh, little news item here. The Fighter 2 Alliance has now proposed a standard format in order to exchange passkeys. So far, passkeys have been uh, synchronizable within respective ecosystems, like uh, specific protocols being used uh, by password managers or within, for example, the Apple uh, keychain uh, ecosystem. But uh, this new standard uh, will make it easier to develop software that does exchange uh, these keys cross-platform, which will be interesting. There's a Small chance, I would say, that this makes things less secure. But remember, synchronizing keys was already possible. This just standardizes the process. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.